I congratulate this great deemed university for getting the A grade by the NAC and should I say it's all due to the wonderful, committed and dedicated services of the trustees, of the vice chancellor and the deans of this wonderful university. Congratulations to all of you for this great achievement. I offer my prayers on this very auspicious 99th birthday of Dr. Rajamal Davadas and her contributions to the society is very well known in bringing the tremendous energies that are available in our women community to the forefront to raise them to greater and greater heights and offer their contributions to the whole country. Similarly, I offer my prayers to Avinash Lingamji for developing this wonderful education trust and offering his whole set of properties in various things and building up this institution to such great heights. So it's a great delight for me to be here on this very auspicious occasion of the 99th birthday of Dr. Amma and give you some glimpses about what is happening the world over in the field of yoga. As most of you know, yoga has started spreading throughout the globe thanks to our Prime Minister who gave that one single talk in the UNO and that single talk attracted large number of countries, 183 countries, to sponsor June 21st as the International Day of Yoga. And there were 43 Islamic countries who came forward. Yes, we are also agree, we also sponsor. And the UNO had no hesitation to declare June 21st as the International Day of Yoga, IDY. This is the greatest contribution of our Prime Minister and yoga has now spread throughout the globe. And what is that which he talked about of yoga? He made it clear. Yoga is not merely physical exercise. It is not merely asanas, as most people think. But yoga is the science of holistic living. Yoga, as the word comes from the word yuj, yujyate anena iti yogaha, Yoga is to join. Yoga is to combine. What we are going to combine? Small little individual personalities we are. We are going to expand ourselves to merge with a total infinite personality which is our original state. Raising ourselves from our normal level to become great human beings, superhuman beings, divine human beings and reach that perfection itself. And that is what yoga is. It works at the physical level, prana level, mind level, emotional level, intellectual level and bringing the spiritual growth continuously to raise everyone to the highest heights of achievement. And what is education? As Swami Vivekananda said, education is to manifest the perfection already in man, he said. So yoga and education are closely knit. The objective of education, the objective of yoga are the same. And therefore, by using yoga, we can bring about the total transformation of our personality. But what is happening to education today? Unfortunately, the education has limited itself to only bread earning education, as Swami Vivekananda said. And take for example, what are the courses that we choose today, our youngsters, 
in education they take to engineering or medicine nowadays who is going to spend so much time for engineering and medicine now we go for computer education within one year two years i can get some diploma in computer education i can start earning more and more money because even after five and a half years of medical education then i go for the md and ms and other things spend another three four years up to ten years how much money i can get instead of that let me go for computer education and get more money for that you know what does that mean our entire education system is moving towards getting more and more money and this is what so we can call as the bread earning education then what should be the real purpose of education is to build the total personality of the entire human being and that should be kept in our mind and that is what this institution has been able to do under the guidance of avinash tengam ji and also amma to bring the right system of education in our country and see that the personality brings about the transformation so therefore our prime minister on that day he said that we had to bring this holistic education the total science of holistic living to the world at large and for that we will declare june 21st as the international day of yoga and what are the dimensions of yoga that are available to bring the total personality gnana yoga raj yoga bhakti yoga karma yoga in our tradition we used to say that yoga meant only patanjali yoga the system developed by patanjali maharshi 900 bc he wrote that beautiful sutras of patanjali yoga sutras and in 196 sutras developed into four chapters chapter 1 samadhi pada then sadhana pada then vibhuti pada and kaivalya pada he gave the whole spectrum of yoga and that has been the greatest contribution of patanjali in the field of yoga but then we had the karma the bhakti and the gnana as other dimensions for growth but swami vivekananda said no all these things have the same goal to raise man to the highest levels of perfection reach that moksha itself absolute freedom what is that moksha it's not just going into a himalayas getting into the things and forget about the society no it is a state of absolute freedom freedom from what freedom from all our tensions stresses anxieties dukkha and overcoming all the bondages freedom from all the bondages that we have what are the bondages that we have take for the mind the time we get up in the morning till we sleep we go on thinking and thinking and thinking you tell your mind come on stop don't think it won't hear us the bondage of the mind what is the bondage of the emotions we are all tossed up and drowned in our violent emotions anger greed jealousy hatred infatuation arrogance kama krodha lobha moha mada matsarya and we are tossed up and down up and down and we suffer this is the bondage of the emotion what is the bondage of the intellect lack of total knowledge we are full of wrong knowledge just we have what is the wrong knowledge we have for all the problems that i have all the diseases i suffer and the tensions and stresses i have we attribute this to somebody else i have got asthma because the outside is very polluted i have got hypertension because my wife is very very horrible i got diabetes because my husband is very bad my children are very naughty therefore i got this problem the society is becoming so bad therefore i get suffering from we can also said wrong man is the maker of his own destiny whatever we are is our own making if i suffer it is my own making if i am very happy it is my own making if i am full of vigor vitality energies dynamism it's my own making if i suffer from various diseases it's my own making this is wrong knowledge that we have at the intellectual level which has to be corrected that the bondage of the intellect then we have the bondage of this body the only the bondage of the body we have to give the food we have to give the drinks and keep it nice going and we don't have control on its growth and other things and we are all born by this birth sustenance and death and after that again we take another body 
That is the cycle of birth and death. That's the biggest bondage. Can we overcome all these bondages? Bondage of the body? Yoga says yes, for example. And this is what they have been great personalities. We have got Hanuman as one of the greatest personalities who was able to complete, gain control and mastery over the body. He was able to condense his whole body into a small speck or able to make this whole body into a like big mountain. He was able to bring the whole Himalaya Parvata itself to Sri Lanka. And he was able to go with such speed, like the speed of the mind. He was able to divinize the body. And he is a Chiranjeevi, beyond the birth and death cycle. Such are the great personalities in our country who came back again and again in our country. Such are the great Siddhars in our Tamil Nadu. And we had Agastya, one of the greatest personalities. Yes, he was able to drink the whole of the ocean. Is it ever possible? Similarly, we had Ramchandram, our Ramalinga Mahaswamigal and Sajasya Brahmendra and Lord the Marap Siddhar who excelled in such great development of the total personality and having absolute conquest of the higher thing, overcoming all the bondages, you know. And that is the freedom that we talk about. Yoga helps to raise ourselves to these heights of greatest excellence. And India is not known just for its epic characters like Sri Rama or Krishna. But again and again, in every state of our country, we had such great personalities who came. We had Shankaracharya from Kerala. We had Swaminarayan from Gujarat. Santa Gnandev from Maharashtra. Lord number of Siddhas from Tamil Nadu. Raghavendra Mahaswamigal. Allama Prabhu from Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. And we have host of Hatha Yoga masters from Madhya Pradesh. Lahari Mahashaya, Yukteswar Giri from West Bengal. And if you go to Punjab, we had Guru Nanak. And we took Kashmiri Shaivism, the greatest of the personalities of Kashmiri Shaivism. And this is why India is known not merely as a Punya Bhumi, but a Divya Bhumi. Because we had such great masters who came back again and again to revitalize our spiritual dimension, our total dimension of human excellence and brought forth this thing. And this is this total dimension that we had to bring forth in our education system. How to do that? We had a Gurukula system of education in our country. And in the Gurukula system of education, we had a complete education system developed for this total personality development of our students right from the beginning. But when the Britishers came, completely the whole thing has been changed. And the mastery over the mind which was being cultivated by our students has been completely smashed. What is yoga? According to Patanjali, is to gain mastery over the mind. This is very necessary for the total development. Yoga, Chitta Vritti Nirodha, as it is said. And what is this mastery over the mind? One is to remove the randomness of the mind, chanchalata of the mind, develop concentration power, faster mind, quicker mind, brilliant mind, sharper mind, dynamic mind, energetic mind, faster, 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 faster. That is one dimension. This is what we all are developing. The second dimension to the mastery is to calm down the mind, silence the mind, tranquil the mind, go deeper and deeper into silence, completely stay in that wonderful silence for a long time. Mana prashamana upayaha yogaha, as it is said by Vasishta. This is the second dimension. Therefore, we have to go feeding up the mind one side, another side is to calm down the mind. Unfortunately, what has happened? This entire thing has been changed. I was thinking, why did this happen? Because when the Britishers came, when our students were sitting in deep meditation, completely silencing the mind and going into the depth of their inner personality, then Britishers said, hey, don't sit like this. Don't be lazy, lethargic, drowsy, sleepy. Come on, get up. You have to be active. You have to be working. You have to be running around and doing all the activities. And don't sit like this. Because they equated this silencing of the mind Meditation of the mind equivalent to laziness, lethargy, sleepiness, drowsiness. You know? As a result, they completely erase this dimension. For the result, we have grown gigantic on one front. On the other side, we have become pygmies. As a result, what has happened? Big imbalance in our personality. Therefore, this big imbalance percolates down and shows itself as stresses and the stress hazards in the whole country. We get number of students from abroad and many youngsters are so wonderful. I get thrilled looking at them. 
Any problem that comes, our project goes wrong, something happens, within minutes they go there and correct. Very dynamic, full of energy. But I ask them to sit quiet, five minutes, no chewing gum in the mouth, no walkman in the ear, no iPad in the hand, what is going to happen? Biggest punishment for them. You know. Why? It is not their mistake, our education system. As a result, that big imbalance has started showing up in various fronts. Started showing us imbalances in the form of depressions. Depression has started soaring high. I was in Australia, we had our very nice center in Melbourne for many years, almost 25 years back since. And the biggest problem in the student community in Australia is depression. 35% of the youngsters, teenagers, are suffering from depression, depression, depression. In an age where they should be bubbling with joy, energy, enthusiasm, energy, they have become depressed, zombies. So the federal government of Australia took this into consideration and they thought, I want to solve this problem, we want to solve this problem. Therefore the Prime Minister developed a wonderful program, Project Beyond Blue. I remember it was 15 years back in Melbourne, there was a huge program under this project Beyond Blue. And huge buildings were given for that project and he called the best of the directors of psychiatry from Sydney University, made him the director. And he said, I am allotting a hundred billion dollars to begin with and if you want more money, don't worry, you ask any amount of money, we will give you. What is the objective? In the next ten years, our thing should come down from 35% to zero, if not one or two percent. This is your job. Everybody was so thrilled. Everybody thought, yes, there is going to be a new light that is going to come up. And tremendous enthusiasm, they started working very hard. Last year I met the director again, after 14 years. I asked him, how is the situation, sir? What has happened? From 35% it has only gone to 37%. No solution. When I was telling this to our friends in Los Angeles, they say, why in Australia, in America, it is 60% depression. We are competing for depression. Why? Because the basic imbalance which is there, we are not correcting. What is the basic imbalance? Very fast mind, quicker mind, dynamic mind, faster, 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 sharper mind, brilliant mind, dynamic mind. Silencing of the mind has been totally neglected. Last year, we had a big international conference in Harvard University. And the topic was yoga and Ayurveda for pain management and addiction. In the United States, addiction has started soaring high. We were taken to the state of New Hampshire in a place called Nashua. And in this small city, very nice city, beautiful city, and nature-rich society, there was so much of addiction, opioid addiction. You know, opioid is a morphine group of drugs. And it's very powerful. For example, you take that opioid, morphine, Three times, four times you get addicted. To come out of that is very difficult. Forty-five percent of the people have become opioid addicts. They don't know what to do. They have set up rehabilitation centers. Youngsters, they become totally useless for the society. And they have spent millions and millions of dollars, but no solution. After three months, six months of rehabilitation, when they are brought back to the society, again they go addicted. So, when in our conference all the top experts had come, and we had the mayor and the governor and other people, they all said, what is happening to us? Addiction, addiction, addiction. And we have no solution. Can yoga do something? Is the question. No. Our International Day of Yoga was being celebrated in Boston and the mayor of the Cambridge had come there on the first International Day of Yoga. And we met him afterwards and he said, see, the situation in our education system has become so bad. I am so concerned. He says, my office is here, this side is MS, MIT, this side is Harvard. And a huge road, beautiful road is there. And what happens? After 5 o'clock, 5.30, all the students, after the classes are over, they start wandering in the street. You know? And in a few hours, one or two hours, they started quarreling each other, screaming at each other. And they open their guns and then kill each other. Every week he says, I have two or three murders that is taking place. Why? Addiction. Psychedelic drugs. Major psychedelic drugs. 
Where are we going in education? With the best of the universities of MIT, the best of the university of Harvard were considered as number one in the world spectrum evaluation. What is happening to the student? Why? The basic reason is just this. That we have grown gigantic on one front, other side we are pygmies. This has to be brought forth. So in our Gurukula system of education, we had realized this thing and brought this dimension totally. So I'm so glad that in this university every day morning you have the prayer and you have got the meditation and bring in the dimension of yoga and others. So we started doing that in our experiment in Arunachal Pradesh. Way back in 1975, we took over those Arunachal Pradesh, about eight schools. And we had to bring the children from various tribal areas and bring them. And when we bring them, they did not know anything. They did not know the language and they don't know how to dress, how to eat, how to use the toilet and they were essentially like cannibals. You know? And such people had to be brought to the mainstream and make uh, the wonderful citizens of our country. How to do that? We had Swami Vivekananda's great direction, yoga. Yoga is the science of holistic living. So bring them into the yoga field. Therefore, we started bringing out the yoga programs. How to build the total personality? So all our experts in science, in research, in psychiatry, we sat together and found out what are the special yoga practices we have to give to bring about this total personality and what aspect of the personality we have to grow in class 1, class 2, class 3, class 4, class 5. We decided, yes, in the class 1, you must develop eyesight improvement. We developed a module for eyesight improvement. Then hearing development and voice culture, second year. Then memory development. Then physical stamina development. Then creativity development. Then IQ development. Then we have team spirit development. Like this fourfold consciousness, fourfold personality. We developed ten modules for doing this thing. And we had to teach them. And we trained the teachers to bring about this dimension. Okay, we have developed a module. How are you sure it is going to give the result? So we did scientific research. When we say memory is going to improve, what is the surety it is going to improve memory? So we did a lot of research. We published the paper. We have shown within about 10 days, the audio memory can increase as much as 26%. Audio visual memory can increase 23%. Visual memory can increase 18%. Short range memory 14%. Long range memory 9%. This is what we have shown and published. Because Swami Vivekananda said, for the modern times, you have to bring the best of the East with the best of the West. Best of the East is our yoga wisdom, spiritual lore, our ancient wisdom base. The best of the West is modern scientific research. Combine the two, you have a new society, the emergence of a new resurgence is going to come up. This is what we do. And the children started blossoming. And all the schools in Arunachal have started growing higher and higher. And the children blossom like beautiful flowers. And in the SSLC, you know, at that time, and they were topping 100% result, and almost 30-40% were out first class, and all the ranks were developed by Vivekananda Kendra Vidyalaya. We started spreading. Today Vivekananda Kendra has nearly 65 schools all over the country, in the North, in the Andaman Nicobar, in Kanyakumari and other places, in which we have used this yoga dimension as a way for the total transformation. They all followed the CBSE syllabus and it's very tough for the tribal children but they were able to raise to the occasion because their IQ increased, memory increased and they were wonderful children. So this is how we started. And what is at the essence of this? Calm down the mind, silence the mind. Every day in the morning, 5 o'clock, 5.30, they will sit for chanting of the Bhagavad Gita. And they do deep meditation. Once I went there after five years and a big team like this and everybody was sitting up the beautiful Bhagavad Gita chanted with such synchrony. Our teacher said, okay, let's all meditate. Every day sat in silence. Five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, half an hour. There was a pin of silence. I was so very happy. Yes, we have been able to achieve. At the end of the meditation session, afterwards, I called one of the boys. Hey, you were sitting like a statue without even moving your hands for half an hour. What were you doing? Sir, for me, Swami Vivekananda is my role model. 
As I, I sit, my mind completely calms down and silences, and we are so awake, and the whole statue comes in front of my eyes. I don't know how the time goes. It looks like one minute, two minutes. You say half an hour. Then we had another boy. I asked him, what are you doing? Sir, for me, Hanuman. Hanuman is my Ishtadevata. You know, I had a girl. And she says, for me, Saraswati. Everybody chose their own gods or goddesses. And they took that and started meditating. So, what is dhyana? Is to calm down the mind and fix the mind on a single thought effortlessly. Tatra pratyaya ekatanata dhyanam as Patanjali defines. You have to see that the mind stays in a single thought and stays in that single thought with full of resurgence that is going to come up. Then there is going to be a tremendous effect. What is the result of this type of meditation that we started doing? Tremendous capacity will come up. It will become a great anchor in your life. You will never get depressed. Normally we used to take these children for the Arunachal Pradesh used to big mountains, they used to go up for the hike. You know? Children were very happy. They get up early, they had a little bit of breakfast and carry some more food and they will start walking. And when they start moving up, it's a very steep mountain and there are no roads. They have to cut the harness and others and make the way and then go. Almost three and a half hours to four hours to go to the peak. You know? Everybody used to be happy, they bring what is called a dao and they cut the things and start going. I was also going. After about 15-20 minutes, one of the young boys, he came, he became very tired and was just sitting there and the teacher came, then he told, Didi, Didi, I cannot go, I am totally tired, I had a little stomach upset today, therefore I cannot move, I will stay here, you people go and come back, I will be just sitting, relaxing and when you come I will join you. Then our teachers are all very trained. They said, my dear, come and caressed the head and said, Who is your Ishtadevata? Why did they? Don't you know? He pulled out one speech. Hanuman. When you have Hanuman, why do you worry? Do meditation on Hanuman. Sit, do dhyana. He started sitting and doing dhyana. Two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. Then he comes with energy. He starts coming up and start running up. Before other people reach, this fellow reaches the peak. This is the power of meditation. This is the power of silencing the mind. This is the power of dhyana, which we have neglected. Once you bring this, then our personality will grow tremendously and see that we grow. Therefore, in all our education system, this is what we have to build it. Whether it is home science, whether it is engineering or other medicine, everywhere, this basic train of man-making, as Swami Vekananda said, has to be brought forth. And therefore, he said, from the brick learning education, let us have. But at the same time, it's the man-making, nation-building education that we had to bring. Therefore, realizing this, our Prime Minister gave that big boost to bring yoga to the forefront. Then he said, we had to celebrate this International Day of Yoga. How do you do that? They formed a committee, made me as the chairman, and we developed a wonderful, comprehensive yoga program for 35 minutes. Everybody can do that. Even the elderly can do it. Such simple practices we did. And people had to practice everywhere. We trained the people. And the first International Day of Yoga, three years back, you know, we had about 20 crores of people practice throughout the country. You know, all the ministries were involved. Our Prime Minister should such effort to see that inter-ministerial meeting and secretaries, everybody he pushed and yes, you have to do that. Army officials and Air Force officials, everybody should start doing that. This is how it started bringing the dimension. And year by year it's growing more and more. And last year our target was to reach about 30 crores and we had 28 crores. And this year our target is to reach about 45 crores. And we had now interministerial meeting throughout the country and everybody is very, very enthusiastic to do that. So I request that all your children to do this International Day of Yoga, just 35, 40 minutes of this protocol which can be obtained from the web. It's all in different languages. Tamil also is there, English, Hindi, all places it is there. Very simple, they have to do the practice. You can do that in bigger groups, smaller groups, in the houses, in the families also. June 21st, we should do that. Then it will spread. Then our Prime Minister said, it is not enough if you do that only one day. It has to come into our education system, which was there earlier in our Gurukula system. So bring this. So how to bring that? The National Council of Teacher Educators, NCTE, 
as you know in the country you know will train nearly 13 lakhs of people every year and yoga has been made compulsory but there were a lot of resistance people said we can't accept how can we take yoga to the education field into this thing we can't do that can't do that a lot of other communities came they went into the court and things were happening finally the supreme court ruled yes yoga is a real science it is a science for total development and it has no religious component by itself as it is but it has been developed in our country therefore it's a science it has to be useful it has to be done and therefore it took up then came the ncrt and they said for the primary school middle school high school we should have complete yoga dimension we developed the syllabus for that for the junior and the senior thing very simple books and when you start doing that in the schools it is going to come up then ugc came forward it has to come into the higher education system a committee was formed by the ugc and we developed the syllabus for the bachelor's degree the master's degree and the doctoral program beautiful things which are needed for the entire community and these things are available in the ugc and the ugc said we are going to have six central universities to whom we are going to fund and there should be departments of yoga and this year the central universities had departments of yoga next year they say we'll have another 5 to 10 people 10 universities and this is how yoga is growing everywhere and bringing about the dimension in the education field at all the levels why because they have got all the benefits as swami kuvelananda said in lonavala yoga has a message for everyone for the children for the babies from youngsters the elders everybody has this thing for what for total personality development for the health for development of the health for prevention of diseases and to promote positive health is a very very necessary thing therefore in the second international day of yoga my prime minister said hey now we have to take yoga into the health field what is to be done india is growing very high in diabetes china is number 1 india is number 2 in the world and we are racing to go beyond china to become number 1 in the world in diabetes india is become the diabetic capital of the world we have to prevent that yoga is the solution and he said only government cannot do this thing we must have association of government with the yoga institution he called all the yoga institutions to join hands to support the government and see that diabetes is mitigated and the ministry of aish ministry of health and family welfare join hands and we developed indian yoga association in which all the yoga masters were brought together we had swami ramdev from nar we had jagi vaste from here we had shishi ravi shankar and the kaviradama op tiwari ji our institution and all the top yoga universities yoga institution joined together to form this indian yoga association under this banner we took up a vast program throughout the country we screened 2.5 lakh people in 60 districts in the country and having screened we have the complete prevalence data which was never available in our country very precise data we have what is happening our rural people has started coming up earlier it was to be 4% diabetes today it has gone up to 11% you know and in the whole country which is which are the state which have maximum prevalence south karnataka tamil nadu kerala andhra you know we are growing fast into diabetes why this is happening earlier also we had why we are now developing diabetes as indians we are prone to become diabetic because genetically we are disposed to become diabetic similarly the malaysians chinese also have a genetic disposition to become diabetic but our lifestyle was so good earlier you know we used to have lot of exercise we used to sleep in time we did not have this tv culture and others and sleep by 10 o'clock 11 o'clock get up early morning by 5 o'clock 5:30 and we had a nice biorhythm that was being set and our lifestyle was very good good exercise now what has happened everything has been totally changed in the new way of life many of the children they sleep very late 12 o'clock 1 o'clock 2 o'clock especially in the holidays you see your children also you know they sleep at 2 o'clock get up at 10 o'clock 11 o'clock that become a common thing as a result there's a tremendous stress that is inbuilt in the entire bio system because of this then take all types of junk food that has started coming mcdonald's kfc and what not i don't have to name them and stressful lifestyle more and more stress more and more stress has started coming all this have started hitting us and the diabetes has started soaring high what are the way out bring down 
Solution, as Patanjali has told, learn to calm down the mind, silence the mind. So we developed a protocol for diabetes. One hour protocol. If you practice, your sugar level is going to come down and your medication is going to come down. And in 50,000 people we did this randomized controlled trial and we have been able to show in three months they have been able to reduce the sugar levels almost to normalcy. And we have been able to reduce the medication. And it's the biggest ever study in the whole world that we have done. And therefore, the Ministry of Health has said, now we will take up this as a national program throughout the country. In every PHCs, we are going to bring this diabetic control program. How this has happened? Because of the direction our Prime Minister gave in the field of yoga, in the field of health. Then what next? He says, cancer. We should do the cancer control program. Particularly the oral cancer, breast cancer and their cancer cervix are the three major cancer things. So deal with them. So a committee was formed by the Ministry of Ayush and Ministry of Health, Family, Welfare and all the yoga institutions together and we have developed a protocol for that. And this time we have to screen two crores of people. In all the 120 districts in the country we are going to screen. And two crores of people and we give them the awareness program. And for this, we need large number of volunteers, particularly oral and the breast and the cancer. Large number of women volunteers are needed. Therefore, my appeal to this university to bring many of your dedicated volunteers to join hands with this national project on integrating cancer project. I call it as ICAP, you know, and with the Institute of Prevention of cancer in the country, Ministry of Health, Ministry of Ayush, we can all join hands and see that this comes up and we are able to screen the entire population of two crores and see that we have the established data on prevention. Then by awareness we will be able to bring down the prevalence effectively. Then we have the yoga program, OCD trials, mechanism studies and bring the palliation. The important thing is when the cancer grows, comes into the third and fourth stage cancer, there is no solution. Modern medical system has nothing. They can give only painkillers. And this support of the palliative care is absent in the country. Only 0.4% of the people in the country have got access to palliative care. Therefore, this group we have decided that we should offer this palliative care to all people in the country who come into this stage. First is prevention. We must prevent cancer and promote positive health. If that doesn't happen, they come to this thing treatment they undergo. A lot of money is spent, you know, in surgery, in radiation, in chemotherapy. But in spite of that, they go into the higher things and they get into the final stages. What is to be done? We requested that all the hospitals, government hospitals, Irish hospitals, then family hospitals, the family and the health hospitals in the country should have 10 beds reserved for the palliative care. And the ministries have agreed. So we need large number of people who have to be trained into this palliative care. So we have taken up the practical dimension to train such people. So we need in the next two years about two lakh people for the palliative care. But imagine, in every hospital there is going to be ten beds that are available. What a great contribution India can make. And that is the vision of our Prime Minister in the field of health and yoga is the solution. So along with yoga, the Aish system, Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani, Homeopathy and others, also are coming up. I notice that our Krishna Kumar is the Chancellor of this university, a great proponent of Ayurveda and very close friend of ours for many decades. And he is also associated with this big movement and all such people can join hand with the visionary like Avinash Kingi and Ammaji. This institution should grow to great heights in bringing in all the surrounding villages, in the surrounding rural and urban areas. Can we prevent cancer coming up? Can we bring about the palliative care centers is the vision that we have and we are prepared to join hands with you to see that this happens with the strength of this university. I have been talking to Sharmaji that whether we can do this thing, he said yes, we can certainly do that and I am sure with the type of dedication you have and the commitment you have for the society with the great visionaries of the Amma and Avinashti, this university should take a lead to become one of the forerunners of this big national movement and see that we contribute to the society. Therefore, thank you very much for bringing me here for this oration and I wish you all very great luck, best wishes, my dear sisters 
and brothers the stri shakti is rising in the country the women empowerment is coming up it's only through the stri shakti that our country had grown to great height if india has to be made the highest in the world again to become vishwaguru it's only through this stri shakti by our sisters and brothers so i am very very sure this university is going to grow to great height and dhanyawad once again